Be prepared for the worst. It's written by Ron Paul, who's a congressman from Texas. Uh, many Anybody who's listened to this show more than once or twice knows that uh, that Ron Paul is one of my political heroes. Mm-hmm. I, I just think the guy gets it. Right. You know, if you can, yeah, look, is he, is he a little stumbly fumbly? Well, yeah. He is, believes he in the Constitution. A, that's right. That's right. Up in his mind, I'm telling you, the, the man is Thomas Jefferson mm-hmm. reincarnated. Yeah. Okay. He understands this stuff. Now, He's also one of the few people in Washington, D.C. who saw this train coming down the tracks long before it showed up at the station, okay? So if we're going to start listening to politicians um, and valuing their opinions and taking their advice, why don't we start taking the advice of somebody who understood why we were going to have this problem before we had the problem? It's somebody who obviously understands market fundamentals and, and the basics of, of economics. Mm-hmm. Let's not listen to people like Barney Frank and Nancy Pelosi oh, and, no. and other idiots, not, not just Democrats, all idiots in Washington who have no clue about how severe what we're facing really is. Okay? I wonder if those politicians have paid their taxes yet. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, you know, it, it doesn't even matter at this it's point, a Brian. Joke. It really I doesn't. Know, it's just... But I, w- I want to read you a paragraph here from this article. Ron Paul says, what is more likely happening is a repeat of the Great Depression. We might have up to a year or so of an economy growing just slightly above stagnation, followed by a drop in growth worse than anything we have seen in the past two years. Mm -hmm. As the housing market fails to return to any sense of normalcy, commercial real estate begins to collapse, and manufacturers produce goods that cannot be purchased by debt-strapped consumers. The economy will falter. That will go on until we come to our senses and end this wasteful government spending. Mm -hmm. He, he, he says it perfectly with the last yeah. sentence. All of this, this economic nightmare that we're facing, we're staring down the barrel of, a, of another Great Depression, and the only way we can end it is by, is by controlling the well, purse strings of Congress. You know, Dan, they, they made fun of George Bush when he stood on the uh, deck of that aircraft carrier saying, Mission Accomplished. And then we, uh, you know, we started losing a lot of American lives in Iraq and Afghanistan. They made a joke out of that. And, uh, you know, I mean, to me, uh, you're looking at the same thing with this administration. Well, how many the times recession, is this? The recession is over? That's just it. Give me a break. That's Give right. me a break. That, that, to me, that sounds an awful, like, uh, an awful lot like mission accomplished. You're, you're damn right. And, and, and we're a long way from mission accomplished. We still got people going out of work every day. We have I know, unemployment I know, hitting double oh digits. Oh, man, I know one company that just laid 11 or 12 people off this week. You know, I mean, come on. Where do you get the recession is over? And to, and to come out and say, well, unemployment is always lagging behind. It's not, a, it's not a good indicator. You know what? I don't know about the rest of you out there, but unemployment figures to me are a key factor. A key factor, it's probably one of the only factors that I will believe when somebody tells me a recession is over or it isn't over. You, you put 16 million people back to work, then tell me the recession's over. You put people back in the homes that they were losing or have lost, then I will believe the recession is over. You see, gas prices stabilize. Then I will believe the recession is over. You, when, when you see our taxes stop being raised every single year, uh, I might believe the recession is over. But you know what? Don't tell me the recession's over right now. It's BS. Well, I want to read the rest of this article uh, from, from Ron Paul uh, off Forbes.com. He says, government intervention cannot lead to economic growth. Where does the money come from for TARP? Uh, That's the Treasury's program to buy bad bank paper, uh, bank debts. Mm -hmm. The stimulus handouts and the cash for clunkers. It can come only from the taxpayers, from sales of Treasury debt or through the printing of new money. Paying for these programs out of tax revenues is pure redistribution. That's it takes right. money out of one person's pocket and gives it to someone else without creating any new wealth. Yep. Besides, tax revenues have fallen drastically as unemployment has risen, yet government spending continues to increase. As for Treasury debt, the Chinese and other foreign <laughs> investors are more and more reluctant to buy it denominated as it is in depreciating U.S. dollars. The only remaining option is to have the Fed create new money out of thin air. This is inflation. Higher prices lead to a devalued dollar and a lower standard of living for Americans. Mm -hmm. The Fed has already overseen a 95% loss in the dollar's purchasing power since 1913. Let me repeat that. 
95% loss in the dollar's value yep. since 1913. Yeah. By the way, 1913 was the year the Federal Reserve was created. Yeah. It's, it's so ridiculous. If we do not stop this prolific spending soon, we risk hyperinflation and seeing a 95% uh, devaluation in the U.S. dollar every year. Yeah. Well, we gotta we gotta uh, start winding this down too because I see the rock stars back in the uh, control room there. <laughs> Got cowboy boots on. Yeah, and he's gonna be telling us any minute he's gonna be doing this in front of the window there. Well, but, look, uh, folks. Again, our, our, the shows are archived. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties, but it's all going to be worked out real soon with blogexpression.com. Um, you, sh you should be able to find our podcast there. Uh, just some technical difficulties uh, getting the two systems yeah, lined up. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and in the meantime, you can read articles that I write periodically for that site. You've been listening to Fighting Back here on WTBQ. We'll see you next Saturday. And you know what? If that health care plan passes today, don't give up the ship, folks. Keep protesting. Catch you next week.